So you all, I know you've heard about randomized trials and you've been talking about them. And many people would say that the randomized trial is the most important development in uh, uh, clinical research in the uh, 20th century. It's actually a relatively recent development, really uh, since about 1950. And uh, it became extremely uh, popular and important into the 60s and 1970s. And now it's regarded as the uh, absolutely essential way to evaluate uh, the effectiveness of therapies and to compare therapies. So the randomized trial is enormously important. Uh, historically, many, many trials used placebos, and uh, that has become controversial, as some of the comments mentioned, that uh, people have become concerned that some placebo-controlled trials uh, are not giving patients the best available therapy. On the other hand, in some settings, uh, the uh, efficacy of treatments is not so stable from one situation to another. So it can be very difficult to decide whether to use a placebo or not. That's the first point. The second point is that there are really two kinds of questions one can ask. One question we can ask is whether drug A is better than drug B. We call that the superiority trial. And that's the kind of design people used with great frequency for four years. The second kind of design asks, is A as good as B? And that approach, when you ask that question, you're basically approaching the question as a non-inferiority question. Now, why would you ever ask the question, is A as good as B? Well, you would ask that question if, for example, a is, uh, has fewer side effects, it's less expensive, it has easier administration, maybe once a day compared to, uh, compared to four times a day, or maybe uh, oral instead of in, uh, IV. So there are many reasons you might want to use two one of two drugs, even though the two drugs are equally effective. So also there's a kind of situation called a Me Too drug, uh, where you have another agent that's very similar to approved drugs and you'd like to use that drug as well. So now, um, let me see here, did I jump ahead too much? No. So in response to the recognition that uh, we can't always try to show that the new drug is better than existing therapy, uh, more and more people have turned to the non-inferiority design. And that's now become really in about the last 20 years, and even in the last decade, has become a much more common approach to development of new drugs or therapies. So in the non-inferiority design, what you do is compare an experimental treatment to another T, I call it in these notes, to another active treatment called C that has been shown to be effective. So we know, the idea is that we know that this drug C is better than placebo or doing nothing. And so we want to study whether the new drug T is as good as uh, the standard therapy C. So the terminology we use for that is not inferior. Now this term not inferior is tricky and we're going to spend some time understanding what the difference between superiority and non-inferiority, and also what we mean by as good as or not inferior.